Hi guys, in this video I'm going to show you 20 features and reasons why DaVinci Resolve is my main video editing software. Let's jump into number one. Now this is super helpful when you have a person in your shot that, uh, let's say maybe the lighting wasn't all the way there, or maybe they have skin complexion problems, things like that, and you want to be able to just make them look better. Uh, so here I have a shot of me uh, talking to the camera. This is actually from one of my previous videos where I was talking about how or why I made my shark film. And actually I'll be using a lot of the shots from my shark film as examples in this video. But anyways, this one is just sort of talking head, you know, typical shot of me looking at the camera. Now I did try to set up sort of the lighting as in I was trying to hide in and partially in this kind of shadow of this tree. But by the time I set up everything, the sun had moved and it basically created this really ugly looking lighting uh, on my face. So one way to fix that is uh, by applying the face refinement uh, tool. I have one node that I created, which is basically just applying the LUT and like some you know, minor color corrections. So now I can go in here and uh, go to effects. And actually before I do that, I'm gonna first uh, create a new node and I'm gonna apply the face refinement. So let me just look for it. And I'm just gonna drag and drop it on top of the new node. Uh, and then here, uh, first thing you wanna do is basically analyze the shot. And this is just basically the AI within DaVinci Resolve that's trying to figure out where exactly is the person's face, with the, all the facial features, uh, and, and also tracking it throughout the shot. And that's actually one of the key things that I like about DaVinci Resolve, is that the artificial intelligence that's built into the software uh, is really smart at figuring out a lot of these tasks that before we would have to do you know, manually, and it's very basically boring and repetitive. Well, now AI can figure out a lot of these things for you, so it's just a matter of literally you know, clicking one button, like you see in this case. And it's already tracked the whole shot, figured out where uh, my faces, the eyes, eyebrows, all that, all those details. And once you have that, then you can start going in there and actually uh, start tweaking the effect. So I'm gonna turn off this uh, thing. You can also click here, you know, and turn off the show overlay. And now I can start applying the, for example, the beauty. So I can just click the automatic beauty amount. Now with a lot of this stuff, you do not want to go all the way because we'll basically overdo it. Although in this case, <laughs> I look quite handsome. <laughs> Again, you can turn it off. You can see how it looked before and how it looks now. So it kind of makes, you know, fixes up a lot of the, some of these wrinkles that are there. The big thing though I don't like is like these sort of shadows I have under my eyes. And again, it's because of this harsh sunlight that I had there. Um, so I can go in here into, what is it? Eye retouching and we have eye bag removal. And so I can see, just pull the slider and look what a difference it makes. Again, this is before, this is after. And there's a lot of different things here that you can do. So again, if somebody has skin complexion problems, you know, acne, things like that. Again, you can remove all of that using all of these settings. So I'll let you guys sort of play around with it. If you do want me to do sort of go in depth into any of these tools that I'll be showing you guys in an upcoming video, then let me know in the comment section below. And as I scroll through the shot, you'll notice that it already applies the effect uh, even though I'm moving throughout the whole shot, because again, the artificial intelligence has figured out where all the facial features are in each frame of the shot. Uh, anyways, let's jump into feature number two. Now this one's pretty self-explanatory. I have a shot up here from my shark film that uh, was shot really, really late into the day. It was basically very uh, dark or was definitely underexposed. So once I apply my LAT and I kind of try to brighten up the shot, you'll notice there's a lot of grain in here. And a lot of times, you know, when you're sort of running and gunning with these indie projects, that's sort of what's just gonna happen. Unexpected situations always come up uh, and then you'll end up with a less than perfect shot. But again, in DaVinci Resolve, it's a very quick and easy fix. So here again in the color page, I'm just gonna quickly create a new node uh, where I'm gonna apply the, the noise removal effect. And you basically go here uh, to the motion effects uh, tab and then here you have the, the temporal uh, and then, you know, settings and then you have the spatial. Uh, and so you can basically play around again with these settings. I'm not going to go into depth again because there's so many things I have to go over in this video. But uh, in, in general, a lot of these things, you really can't go wrong. You just kind of play around with the settings and see where you're getting the best results. Uh, so in here, I'm just going to go in here, uh, uh, choose the better option. And I'm going to choose the you know, motion range. I'll just leave it at medium. And then the same thing here for spatial. I'm gonna go for better. 
And then as far as the threshold, uh, here I'm just gonna increase it here. And the same thing here on the spatial, I'm gonna increase that the threshold so that you can actually see the effect. And again, this is how it looked before, definitely grainy. And this is now how it's looking once the, the noise removal is applied. And you know, this is again zoomed, zoomed in. So once I zoom out, the shot now looks you know, much, much cleaner. Now, uh, I know that there's a lot of software out there that does have noise removal tools built into it, but from everything I've tried so far, the ones that come uh, included with DaVinci Resolve Studio are, I think, the best ones. Again, this one is self-explanatory. You can remove an object in your shot. Now, because of, again, the AI features built into DaVinci Resolve, it just happens that much faster. And I'll, uh, I'm not gonna show you exactly how to do it because I already went over in detail of how to use this tool in my previous video where I talk about the 10 AI features that are built into DaVinci Resolve. So definitely I'm gonna encourage you guys to check out my previous video by following the link in the description. Now this tool is very similar to object removal, but it just basically removes objects in your shot in a slightly different way without using AI. Here I have another shot from my shark film. And as you can notice here on the top, the microphone got into the shot. Now in this case, it's actually not an issue because I can just easily punch into the shot and basically just crap this outside of the frame. But let's say you don't want to do that and you want to get this whole full frame, but you want to get rid of the microphone. Well, uh, here, I have already one note. I always have usually one note. And this is just applying my basic kind of color correction uh, to kind of convert it from log to rec 709 image. But now I'm going to just create a new note up here. I'm going to go here to effects and I'm going to look for patch and I'm going to drag and drop the patch replacer. And uh, now I'm just going to basically point this here, point it there. And you notice now we have two microphones. <laughs> That's definitely not what we want to do. Basically, the way it works is that this window, uh, you want to drag it to where you want to copy a part of your shot. In this case, I'll just move it here to the left. And then this part, this window, you want to put where you want to replace or basically cover up that portion of the shot. So I only need to do this small section right here. And, you know, this part of the sky kind of matches perfectly with this. Now, if your shot was actually moving and you wanted to make sure that that patch effect is basically following with your shot as it's, the camera is basically moving around, then the uh, easy way to do that is to go here to the tracker and you uh, have to actually track something you, within your shot uh, so that you can apply that movement to the, the patch effect. But otherwise, as you can see, it's a very straightforward and quick effect. Now, this one I also talked about in my previous video, but I'm going to show you guys a different example here of how it basically can be uh, applied. So here I have a shot with this surfer guy and then another character in my film as he comes up and he's talking to him. Now, one thing that I noticed is that this surfboard just basically stands out too much to me. Like, the, you know, you're seeing the logo up there. I think it's a little bit too bright. Uh, definitely, I do not want the audience to be focusing on that surfboard. So I just want to be able to like separate it, darken it a little bit, maybe even blur it, just so that it doesn't draw so much attention to it so that, uh, you know, the audience is actually looking at the characters in the shot. So, you know, normally you would have to create a power window, track it, all that stuff. Well, in this case, I can use a magic mask to very quickly find out, uh, basically, and separate this area. So I'm going to again create a new node here. And on this node, I'm going to go here to magic mask. And there's different ways you can select it. You can do, for example, person or a feature within a person. Like, let's say there's just their clothing. And again, you guys can see sort of how I use these features in my previous video. But in this case, I'm going to go here to the object track. And then, you know, you just pick your the little color picker and you just select the object that you want to track. Uh, then you, if you want to turn on here, this option so you can see the overlay and you're going to see basically if it selected your, you know, your the object completely. In this case, it did not select the whole object, so I'm going to pick a few more spots here. And there it goes, as you can see, it picked the whole surfboard. Uh, you, you can also track it now, so I'll just track it both ways. And as you notice, again, thanks to the wonderful AI built into the DaVinci Resolve, it just recognizes exactly the edges of the surfboard uh, it, as it basically moves throughout the shot. Again, if you don't appreciate this, then you've never spent uh, hours and hours previously having to rotoscope or basically separate elements in the shot just so you can, you know, control them separately. So anyways, that's it. It's done. And now uh, the great thing about it is that I can create, for example, another node. 
and I'm gonna connect here the alpha channel, so the blue to the blue of this new node. And I'm basically gonna be able to now go and actually adjust individually the colors of that surfboard. So in this case, I'm gonna turn off the overlay. And in this node, I'm gonna go here to my color settings and for example, I'll just darken it. I'll darken the surfboard. Uh, maybe I'll go, I'll blur it, something like that. And then now you'll notice that it's applying it nicely, but the magic mask actually did such a good job. It actually perfectly cut out the surfboard and the edges are very sort of uh, strong. So I can now go back into here, into these features, and I can actually, for example, blur, just so it kind of softens those edges a little bit better. And right there, as you can see, I was able to now go from this shot, where the surfboard is definitely too bright, I think, uh, and kind of here, it's a bit darker and a little out of focus. And now I just think it's not drawing as much attention to itself as it did before. Now, this tool is really great if you have to digitally simulate what happens in the real world when uh, your shot or part of your shot goes out of focus. There's a lot of subtle things that happen that you cannot replicate with just a standard blur. So here uh, in DaVinci Resolve, uh, I have two shots actually. I have one shot here of the beach here, this is again for my shark film. And then it, here's another version of it where the shot is slightly out of focus. You'll notice here that as the shot goes out of focus, Yes, everything is kind of blurry, but you'll see those little highlights, all those little light sources there in the distance. They are not washed out. They're actually still very bright and, uh, you know, they're kind of shimmering, you could say. But they're definitely, you know, noticeable. Now, here's the same shot, but basically in focus. So if I were to go here to the color page and let me just create again another node. And if I go and I apply a simple, basically Gaussian blur effect to it, See what happens as I increase, for example, the thing, the strength. It blurs the whole shot, but it also blurs the light sources and they just basically don't uh, regain their intensity and they basically no longer look like light sources. And this is usually what happens when you have an amateur just apply, uh, you know, just any typical blur effect to a shot uh, because they're trying to simulate that the shot is out of focus in camera. Well, again, you can see right away that it's just uh, basically blurs the whole shot. And previously, to be able to simulate that digitally, it was a whole basically complicated process. Well, not anymore, because now in DaVinci Resolve, you can simply apply the lens blur effect. So here, I'm gonna delete this to Gaussian blur, and here we have the lens blur effect. I'm gonna drag and drop it. And you'll notice right away, as I increase, for example, the blur effect, look at those highlights. They're still regained in there, and you can see the shape of it. I can actually even make it brighter here by dragging the highlight button here. Uh, and I can even change the shape of my bokeh, you could say. So I can click here to the previous shape. You can see this is basically the shape that we have right now. And that's because it's uh, set to a hexagon. So for example, I can say to select uh, octagon. Uh, I can adjust, for example, the blade curvature. So as I do that, you see uh, bokeh becomes basically rounder. And now I'm gonna turn off the preview and basically just, you can see how it affects the shot here. So here, I'm gonna round it off. So now you see that bokeh is nice and round, but it's still retained in the shot. It's not, the intensity of those lights are not diminished. Uh, so they're, they're actually visible there, like it would be in, in, if this shot was for real out of focus. Um, I can also adjust, for example, here, the, the another cool thing is that you could actually simulate and make this look like it was actually shot with an anamorphic lens by uh, adjusting the anamorphism of it. So you can make it kind of, you know, give it those really oval bokeh effect in it. Uh, or if you wanted to, you can just go actually the other way. You can stretch it, you know, horizontally. So it's really up to you. And you, right away, as you can notice, it it's, looks a lot more realistic. And the cool thing is that now as the shot is moving, you'll get that sort of a shimmering effect that you get in real life when you actually have a shot that's out of focus. If you need to create subtitles for your videos, uh, films, whatever it is that you're working on, then again, DaVinci Resolve is going to make this process super easy thanks to artificial intelligence. So here I have a shot of me talking and I can again very quickly go here to timeline and uh, select create subtitles from audio and you know you can play around with the settings I'm just gonna go click create and uh, you're just gonna have to wait for DaVinci Resolve to analyze all of the audio in this uh, timeline and actually create the subtitles for you and it happens pretty quickly so as you can see up here it's telling me it's going around 13 times faster than the actual you know length of the video and there, it's done already. I can zoom in here. 
And right there, you can see the subtitles here showing up on the bottom. Uh, my experience, this works basically 99% of the time. Very rarely do I actually have to go in there to tweak or kind of adjust uh, basically the text. Uh, and you can also go up here and click, for example, on one of these if you wanted to, and you can change the text. So you can very easily edit it, like I said, if you did find some mistakes. Uh, and you can also go here to the track settings and you can actually now uh, kind of play around with the look of your subtitles. So if you actually wanted to burn those subtitles into the video, because you could just export them as a separate subtitle track, like an uh, SRT file. But if you wanted to actually burn it into the video, then you can do that too. And then you can basically customize the look of these. So like, let's say in this case, they're not very noticeable because they're kind of blending in, in with the background. So maybe I'll change the color, make them a little bit maybe kind of yellowish. Maybe I'll add uh, maybe a kind of a line outside of it. Maybe make that line black and make it very thin. Let's also maybe increase the font size. So I'll increase it and maybe make it bold. Uh, or for example, I could, uh, you know, put a shadow or do like, let's, let's say this kind of a background around it. And now, as you notice, as I scroll, all my subtitles there are showing up. So as you can see now, adding subtitles to your videos is so easy, anybody can do it. This tool I already showed in my previous video, but I'm gonna show you guys another example because I think it's just works so well and it's so fast and easy to use. So again, I have another shot up here for my film and all of the audio that we captured for my film is really good quality because we use the professional boom microphone with the blimp on it and all that stuff. But just as an example in this video, I'm gonna show you what the original audio sounded like in this shot that was actually recorded within the camera. So there was obviously a lot of wind noise because we we're moving on the boat here and we're out on open water. So this is how the original audio sounds. <laughs> So definitely not great audio, but let's say somebody hands you this and they want you to edit this video and they want you to make it sound good. Well, now it's super easy. You go here in the edit page, you go to audio tab and you have here a tool called voice isolation and you just turn it on and that's it. Now let's listen to how the shot sounds now. <laughs> As you can hear, it literally gets rid of all the background noise, all the wind noise, and you can actually hear what the actor is saying. So again, if you ever do get you know this really horrible quality audio and you have to fix it up, again, voice isolation makes this super easy. Now this tool again uses artificial intelligence to analyze your shot and actually figure out basically different objects or layers within your shot. So we can actually figure out what's in the foreground, your, your subject, let's say background, you know, and all the objects in between. And uh, this is really powerful because you can then use that information to, for example, separate uh, parts of your image. Like in my previous video, I actually showed you guys how I used uh, this tool to be able to actually uh, uh, blur the background in my shot without affecting the, the two girls that are in the foreground of the shot. You could, of course, use the depth map to apply, for example, like atmospheric effects in your shot. And again, a very powerful tool, and I would almost call this like a really detailed and very powerful way of masking uh, different uh, objects in your shot based on the depth uh, within your shot. Now, if you guys want me to really go in depth and show you pretty much all the capabilities and possibilities of using depth map uh, in your projects, then again, let me know in the comment section below. Now, one of the main reasons why I originally started using DaVinci Resolve was actually because of color grading. Way, way back in the day, before I actually completely switched to DaVinci Resolve for all of my editing and, and even special effects and compositing needs, uh, back when I was still using After Effects for effects or I was using uh, Adobe Premiere for video editing, uh, I would still always export my final project to DaVinci Resolve uh, to do my color grading. And I gotta say that over the years, the, all of their color grading tools have just, I mean, gotten, you know, a thousand times better. Definitely thanks to a lot of the AI features, like I was already showing you guys, that just makes the color grading process that much faster and more powerful. Uh, but also like simple things like uh, having the ability to use the light box to preview all of your shots quickly and see just the overall sort of grade in your project, or just the whole idea of using nodes when you're color grading. As I mean, once you start using nodes, whether it's for color grading or compositing, Trust me, you will never ever want to go back to doing things basically using layers like Adobe Premiere or, or After Effects still uses. 
In short, if you really want to color grade your projects like a professional, then stop you know, playing around with all these other software. You've got to switch to DaVinci Resolve because that's really where all the most powerful color grading tools are. Now, obviously, I cannot go in depth about my whole color grading process just in this video because that will take hours on, it, on its own. But if you guys want me to show you some more examples that I haven't already shown on my channel of me color grading in DaVinci Resolve, then again, let me know in the comment section below. This tool again uses AI to analyze your shot so that it can actually recognize objects and sort of turn uh, your flat video into almost like a 3D uh, model so that you can then use this uh, artificial light to be able to further enhance the lighting uh, within your shot. Again, if you guys want to see me use the real light effect, uh, then check out my previous video because there I go more in depth into all the features. If you ever have to convert a standard widescreen video into a vertical video for platforms like TikTok or Instagram, uh, then you know how painful it is than having to go in there and manually basically reframe the shot so that you're always basically pointing at the most important part of the shot since the sides are now being cut out. Well, again, this tool is gonna make that super easy. So here I have a shot of the two actors in my film uh, and they're both moving quite a bit and the camera's moving a lot. And uh, now I'm gonna show you guys what happens when I reframe this shot to a vertical frame. As you can see, his face is now going in and out of frame. Uh, so to fix that, again, it's very simple. Here in the edit page under the video tab, uh, you go to smart reframe and you can choose automatic, but in this case, I'm actually gonna choose a reference point because I wanna make sure that uh, basically DaVinci Resolve is following his face and not the face of the other uh, actor in the shot. And then I'm just gonna click reframe. And there, it's done it already. This is how it looks. As you can see, it reframed it nice and smooth so we can always see the actor's face. And that's it, it's that simple. Now, what if you're color grading a project that was edited in another software and somebody just hands you a fully rendered file? So meaning you have all the different shots there all together in one video file. Uh, well then normally you would have to kind of go in there and basically find the cut points yourself and so that you're able now to separately color grade each shot. Here in the media page I'm browsing and I have for example the opening scene of my shark film and let's say I want to import that and I want DaVinci to automatically recognize all of the cut scenes in it. So I'll right click on it, select scene cut detection and then up here I'll just click auto scene detect and you'll see it basically go through the whole clip and actually find all the different cut points and it's gonna mark it here for you. So you see these green uh, lines, that means that it's very confident that this is where the actual cuts are. And then if you want to, you can click here, add cuts to media pool. And now you'll notice it imported all of these different shots from this whole rendered clip uh, as separate basically uh, clips right here into my project. If you've ever shot a project with a lot of footage and more importantly with a lot of people in it, then you know how painful it can be later on trying to find specific shots of, of a certain person. Uh, so this is really gonna be handy, like let's say if you're doing like a documentary or maybe like a wedding video, uh, and you wanna be able to sort of categorize your shots based on who's in it. Well, DaVinci Resolve again makes this super easy. You basically select all of the clips you wanna analyze, right click and click analyze clips for people. And after that, DaVinci is gonna actually recognize all of the different faces in your shots. Uh, you'll be able to now go in and actually add the, the particular names for each person. And then within the Smart Bin section of DaVinci Resolve, you'll be able to very quickly find all the different shots with a particular person. Whenever you're working on a video of somebody talking and you wanna be able to find a specific word or sentence that they mention, uh, then editing with text is gonna really speed that process up. Here I have a shot of me just talking, doing a, a desktop review or something. And I'm gonna right click on it and select audio transcription and then transcribe. And once DaVinci Resolve is done analyzing all the audio in this clip, it's gonna essentially show you uh, the screen with all of the text transcribed for you. And now you can very easily uh, select a particular word or sentence, and then you can create a sub clip, you can play this section, or for example, you can insert it right into your edit. And then very quickly, you can look for another section that you wanna drop into your final edit. As you can see, it's another great tool that uses artificial intelligence to speed up our work. Now this tool will very quickly analyze all of the audio and video clips in your project 
uh, based on the audio and then categorize it using the smart bins so that again you can very quickly find a particular clip or sound effect uh, that you're looking for. In fact, it's so powerful that it will even categorize it based on different sound effects or types of music that it will recognize within your clips. Again, if you guys want to see me use this tool in more detail, then head on over to my previous video. Sometimes you're working with video that was just shot in regular speed, but then when you're editing it, it actually turns out that, you know, you wish you could slow it down and get that nice slow motion effect. Well, now, thanks to Optical Flow and Speed Warp that's built into DaVinci Resolve, you can do that and you can actually get a very realistic looking effect. So here I have another shot from my shark film where a character falls overboard uh, into the water. And let's say I want to slow this down. So I'm going to right click on it, go here to change clip speed, and I'm going to put it at 25%. So it's basically four times slower. And I'm going to extend it here so until he actually lands in the water. Now, of course, the issue is that when you play this back, it looks very choppy and that's because it's essentially duplicating each frame four times. So now you can actually use those tools that are built into DaVinci Resolve to create the in-between frames. Optical Flow is available on some of the other editing software out there, but Speed Warp is something that's very unique to DaVinci Resolve and I'll show you why. So here inside Inspector, I'm just going to scroll down to Retime and Scaling and then for the Retime process, I'm going to choose Optical Flow and you'll notice now it's going to start creating those frames in between. Uh, but like, for example, here, when you look at the arm, you notice that optical flow on its own, it's just, you know, the effect is basically not, not that good because it basically duplicates it and kind of fades between the different frames. Uh, let me kind of go forward. Like, for example, here, this leg definitely doesn't look, you know, like an actual solid leg. Well, I can go here to motion estimation. I'm going to choose speed warp. And now look what happens. It actually recreates that leg in that particular frame or how it would actually look if we were to actually to shoot this shot at a higher frame rate. And so now when you play back the shot, you'll notice it looks a lot smoother and actually looks again like it's shot in slow motion. As you guys can see, it's a very easy and a very effective way of converting regular speed shots into super slow motion. This tool is going to be helpful in a few different situations. Let's say you have a video that was shot, uh, let's say 1080p, but then you want to use that shot in, a, in a, another edit that's actually 4K. So you want to be able to upscale that shot and, and make it look a little bit better as if it was almost shot in 4K. Well, that's where this tool is going to come in handy. I'm actually going to use it in a slightly different scenario. So here I have a shot uh, that was actually shot in 4K, but when you look at the shot, you'll notice that here on the left side of the screen, a boat sort of creeps in there, and on the right side, we start seeing the land. And this is actually supposed to be a scene in my film where the characters are stranded out in the middle of the ocean. So, you know, those things are not supposed to be there in the shot. So I ended up actually zooming in two times into this shot uh, so that, you know, I'm effectively cutting out the edges of it. But uh, the issue now is that we're seeing that the, the quality of the shot is just not all the way there. But not to worry, because here in Inspector, we have another little option on the bottom called Super Scale. I'm going to enable that, and uh, you can play around with the settings. I usually just leave it at two times enhanced, especially in this case, because I've zoomed in two times. And you can, of course, adjust here the amount of sharpness that you want in the final effect, and then, for example, the noise reduction. So I'm actually going to crank up the noise reduction almost all the way up, uh, because uh, this is how, the again, the original shot looks once I zoom in two times. And now this is how it looks after I apply the super scale. And here is a side by side comparison of the two different versions. As you guys can see, it definitely provides a nice improvement to my shot. This feature in DaVinci Resolve is going to be very helpful to anybody who's ever worked for hours editing a project only to realize that, let's say, at the beginning of the day, they screwed up and by accident maybe changed something or, or deleted something uh, within their timeline. And now they want to be able to go back to the beginning of the day and bring just that one section of the timeline without obviously losing all of the work that they've done so far. So let's say here in DaVinci, I by accident deleted this shot and I go on and I keep on editing the whole project. And then later on, I'm like, oh man, you know, I want to bring this section back. Well, now the latest version of DaVinci Resolve actually secretly stores all of your timelines for you. So you can always go back and restore them and then basically be able to copy just that one section of it and bring it into your latest edit. So for example, here I have a timeline. I can right click on it and go restore timeline backup. 
and I can choose which restore I want to bring back. Once I click it, you can see it basically brings it in there as a copy. And that's it, problem solved. Now the final feature that I want to mention in this video is the fact that DaVinci Resolve has no subscriptions. Yes, this is actually a really big deal because if you were to uh, go and actually add up all of the monthly payments you made for, let's say, Adobe Creative Cloud, you'll see just what a big amount of money that actually all adds up to. Whereas with DaVinci Resolve, you make one payment and that's it, you're done. You're gonna get all of the lifetime updates for free. And as you guys can see, Blackmagic is always adding great new features to DaVinci Resolve. By the way, this video is not sponsored by Blackmagic or DaVinci Resolve. This video is actually uh, sponsored thanks to all of you guys who go and buy my filmmaking tutorials and lads on my website at tomantisfilms.com. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you smash that like button. Let me know in the comment section below what else you guys want to see. And otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.